What about that, my soccer universe? Oranje wins in Germany. Wow. Wow, that was a great game. Absolutely wonderful game, I have to say. Um, between two really, really strong opponents. Also got to be said, I, uh, you cannot take Germany out of that equation um, as well. I'm going to start right off, I mean, wearing my 98 Holland shirt, which, you know, I wear because Holland now has a little bit black and white accent, so that seems to be the appropriate one. Um, I watched that game I had on the other uh, screen, the Austria game, so two at once, and those were the two games with the most goals, so I'm more than happy with my choices there. I thought about putting the laptop with uh, Slovakia against Croatia, and then put Russia at Scotland on the phone. No, I think two is enough to follow. I watched highlights uh, this morning as well, so I'm quite uh, informed. Well. Netherlands Germany, uh, Netherlands at Germany, uh, played in Hamburg where in 88 the Dutch beat the Germans uh, on the road to the Euro 88 victory. So, um, and Kuman converted a penalty and then was involved in some not so nice uh, scenes where he took Olaf Tone's shirt and wiped his butt with it. And, you know, all long forgotten, has to be said. The girls are running up and down. So, if you hear them, uh, don't. I hope you don't mind. That game started out with the Dutch a little bit on the, you know, they always had more possession, but um, especially in the first half, I thought they were lacking a little bit ideas. Um, they had the first chance, but it was the Germans who were really very dangerous on the counter. And I think it was a counter over Klostermann that citizens just could save by Serge Gnabry put in the net uh, in the ninth minute or so. And uh, it was really... Um, game on from that moment on and everyone uh, in the pregame already said um, it is between those two nations it is always about goals about speed about ball uh, ball, ball possession and uh, it really was i mean the dutch with possession but the germans being uh, more dangerous um, they had a huge chance by uh, Marco Reus, Vasilison made a great save, and then I think even Gnabry could, could have had a second. Um, the Dutch needed some time getting going. There was a header from De Ligt uh, in, this, in the 20th. Um, that was basically the best chance I had the feeling. Um, and the second half, I mean, I thought a 2-0 would have been too much for Germany at that point, but it was pretty much in there. And, you know, the 2-0 they got in Amsterdam. Uh, it was a very similar game um, um, to the one in Amsterdam, where the Germans managed in the second goal. Uh, this time they did not, and that uh, put some hope in me that maybe the Dutch will get going again. And it's amazing, they score their goals in the second half usually. So yeah, uh, the game then started out again, the Germans really dangerous. I mean, Serge Gnabry should have made it 2-0 um, probably, then uh, there was a great save from the Licht that could have gone into the net as well. Um, I think there was another chance, uh, name escapes me now. Uh, anyway, it was really uh, Germany for the first 10 minutes in the sacks. I could have, I really thought they are not going for the jugular. Um, and they didn't. And in a way they allowed um, the Netherlands to come back. And then it was the Dutch uh, put uh, there were some substitutions. I think Marlin came in uh, for their own, uh, proper for Dumfries. Um, and at that moment, the game started changing. There was uh, Depay. No, it was uh, n n not Depay, sorry. Um, what's the, um, the red? I, I must say uh, Roy, but that, that, that's not him. Um, Barber, Rian Barber. I want to say Brian Roy because that's <laughs> that's from the nineties. Rio Bubble puts a cross in the tar, completely mishandled the ball falls to Frankie de Jong, who with a very cool and calm and collected puts the ball into the net uh, in the 59th minute. Um first goal for the Netherlands. And then another cross in this time by Depay. Uh that is a little bit of a mess. Um you know, ball bound, but then suddenly it's a net because it's a bounce of Jonathan Tarr into his own net. So within uh, like a 10 minute span, Jonathan Tarr had a horror uh, showing. Uh, and I thought, well, the 
Dutch have that more or less in the bag now because uh, they turned the game around, they had control of the game, they really took the game to themselves. But then um, Counter-Attack, I think it was over Schultz who got the win in Amsterdam, um, comes, uh, uh, goes into the box and then the ball falls kind of weirdly onto the Licht's hand. Schultz was offside, the, the Licht had no chance of seeing that and I don't think he made his... Uh, hand so far so uh his body is so broad so i really thought this was not correct um given to give the penalty but most uh importantly there was an offside so yeah we don't have var cross is home 2-2 okay draw i take a draw but the dutch came back and uh in the combination of the game via um depay van Aldum, and then marlen finishes it off uh his first game for the Dutch, first goal, plays for PSV, so I will see him with Lusk. Um, pretty impressive, I have to say. It's really nice goal, 79th minute, 3-2 for the Dutch. The Germans never looked back, and Van Aldum in stoppage time uh, manages again. It was a uh, dead pie, you thought he had stalled the attack, and then plays a wonderful pass onto Van Aldum and makes it 4-2 for the Dutch, who now even win the head-to-head between the Germans and are well on the way. I don't want to say that they were in real dire straits because they only two games and they lost one to Germany. I think they could even take another loss and still qualify with relative ease. Uh, the other game in that group was Estonia against Belarus, 1-2, of course, didn't see uh, much there. And now the standings are that Germany and uh, the Northern Ireland both have four games, but you know, Germany played the Dutch twice. <laughs> Uh, they have 9 points, Northern Ireland 12, we have Northern Ireland against Germany coming up. The Dutch now is 6 out of 3, Belarus 3 out of 5 and Estonia 0. So, you know, it's a very uneven group. Slovakia, Croatia, that was not much of a game. I expected much more from Slovakia, to be honest with you. Uh, but no, um, Croatia got the goal uh, right at the end of the first half, then scored one. Uh, of Perisic right at the beginning of the second half got a third one which was a really nice goal and even a fourth one and wins relatively easy uh, at Slovakia who are now uh, in trouble I would say Wales gets a lucky win at Azerbe against Azerbaijan well lucky I, I don't know but you know Azerbaijan equalized the first goal was a very for Wales was a very uh, weird on goal where a uh, bail makes a cross in the defender is the goalie runs out to collect the ball defender standing bounces off the back of his head into the net then uh goalkeeping mistake where in car counter like a kind of kind of weird, weird shot but the uh, welsh goalkeeper could not hold on to it slots it one one and then bail gets the winner uh in a scrappy fashion but you know he'll take it so uh they win 2-1 against Azerbaijan. Now in that group we have Hungary and Croatia each with nine points. Hungary holding still the head-to-head -head, uh because they won at home to Croatia. Wales six, Slovakia six, Azerbaijan zero. I think it's still open, but I'm I have a feeling that Slovakia might have a hard time uh, grabbing onto the spot. Um I think it's with Hungary, Croatia, and Wales. Croatia probably is steadying the ship right now. Moving on to Austria's group, where Austria had a relatively easy 6-0 win over Latvia. I mean, I saw the goals. The second one by Savica was nice, but it was slightly deflected. The first one was a real a product of high press. And then, you know, once they get the penalty to make, which I honestly, I have not seen the foul yet, but once they got that penalty uh, and make it 3-0, then in the last 15 minutes, just Latvia fell apart. Um, Slovenia, though, surprisingly beat Poland 2-0. Um, well, uh, Poland had more of the game, maybe in the first half, but then when, I, when you see the highlights, you only see chances of Slovenia. And the first one was after a corner kick. Uh, slotted home and the second one was a really nicely taken goal from a very acute angle to make it 2-0 for Slovenia which on one side I'm happy for Austria because I think we can win the group now uh, we have a chance because I didn't expect Poland to lose and uh, there's uh, Poland-Austria coming up but on the other side, uh, that keeps Slovenia very, very much in the running. If you look at the standings now, Poland 12, Austria 9. Uh, I mean, you would expect those two up there, but Slovenia and Israel are still in the running. And that uh, will not make it an easy path, at least for Austria, I have to say. Um, 
they have to play at home to Israel, a game they should win. And away to Slovenia, that's the one uh, that I'm a little bit uh, worried. I think Poland away, I I hope we don't need a result there, but you know, if you can get the draw, it would be nice. Northern Macedonia and Latvia are, of course, out of it. And that leaves us with the last group, uh, where Cyprus Kazakhstan played a 1 1. And. Um, San Marino almost took a lead against Belgium, but in the end, you know, they, uh, I think it was a penalty that made one nil for Belgium, and then uh, in the second half, Belgium added three more. Nothing glorious. And Scotland took an early lead against Russia. Everyone thought, yeah, the Scots are going to do something. Nope, they, no, 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 no. Uh, then it was all Russia, and I think it was uh, kind of defensive. Or, uh, 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 the Scottish defender wanted to clear the ball and then place it right in the path of Juba. Who makes it 1-1 one, one, and then Shikov was also a scrappy winner for Russia and so in that group I think it's pretty clear who's gonna move on. Belgium 15, 5 out of 5. The only loss was the only loss of Russia was against Belgium, 12 points. Everyone else is pretty much out of it. It's more a surprise that Kazakhstan 7, Scotland 6, Cyprus 4 and San Marino 0. Um, Scotland has the playoff so that's at least counting for something. So they I don't want to say they can't afford being, being bad, but it doesn't look good for Scotland. Well, today, not two great games. Uh, England, Bulgaria, you know, if Bulgaria if it was better. Serbia, Portugal, that's the one to look forward to. I think that will be the interesting one. There's also France, Albania, but you know, I think it's Serbia, Portugal. That's the game for today. Well, let me know what you thought about the games, which ones you watched, and whether you agree with me with uh, Germany and the Netherlands. Two teams that I think, I have a feeling they will meet again at Euro 2020 and even if they don't, those two teams can go far. I really feel that this is the class in Europe almost at the moment. Not quite, but they are really, really, really good. They, they, they I have, will have a word on who will be the new European champions. Anyway, give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you like this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also consider subscribing to my channel to keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day. Bye!